Welcome to Esoteric Thoughts. Today we have Michael Tazarian joining us. And Michael, I'd like to start off with a word that people seem to be very afraid of, yet they don't really understand the meaning of the word. What is the occult and what impact did the occult have on Christianity? Yeah, thanks. Good question. Uh, you see, the, when the emperors like Theodosius and uh, Constantine, when these great thinkers, and then also people like Bishop Irenaeus, uh, there was a long process, Marcion, any of the great church fathers, going back to the very beginning, they knew that there was many, many rivals to Christianity. Some were very, very important that if I was to mention like the cult of Orpheus, you just get completely blank stares as if that's the only one. Remember when the Christians used to go down into the labyrinth and you hear those wonderful stories about how they hid out from the Roman enemies in these great labyrinths. The labyrinths were, were there hundreds, if not thousands of years before Christians used them. And even the symbol of the fish that the Christians adopted was adopted from these labyrinthine temple structures underneath the cities had been built by a group called the cult of, of Orpheus. And Orpheus was often shown standing on the fish. So the Christians just adopted this occult image. So the point is made that Constantine, Theodosius, Justinian, all of these different people, all the way, all the different, uh, you know, Justin Martyr, any of the people that we know from Christian history, were very worried about all of these rival groups, Gnosticism, the cult of Orpheus, big time the Magi, the Persians, they even tried to write the Magi into the nativity story uh, for multiple reasons, right? But the Magi are just a, a code word for Persian mystics, cult of Mithras, cult of Serapis, the Egyptian story, the Hermeticists. There was 101 rival, no, we're not even talking here about female groups, that's totally been scrubbed. They rarely pop their head up, but we have the cult of Ashera and all of that, Astarte, Venus. So there were so many groups that they had to be categorized. So as, as you build a wall, as Christian thinkers and patriarchs built this wall, and there was a lot of physical slaughter. You know, if you study the real story of the Council of Nicaea and the other councils, there was actual physical murder took place. Constantine ordered his guards to kill the attendants at the Council of Nicaea. And this went on. Another bishop who had another council in another area, say Ephesus, for example, or wherever, right? They could literally imprison people sitting at the table and saying, you're a heretic. So it was the same. This is what where we get that. So the occult groups, this was a sort of a categorization of anybody, not just Satanists. The, the Satanists need not apply. It was anyone who just had a rival philosophy, ideology, doctrine, dogma separate to the one that the patriarchs were putting together. And the easiest way was to just call them occult and have done with it. The word means nothing in the world. The word just means hidden, that which is hidden from sight. You know, that, that thing is occulted. It just meant it's, it's not visible to you. So the word has absolutely no meaning really of its own except that. But it was then, you know, it's become synonymous with the evil ones or the witches, you know, they're the, the ones that are into their cult. My God, Christianity is more occult than anybody can ever imagine. Its roots are hidden. Uh, the secret societies from which it come, like the Setian Atnists and the uh, Dionysians or Persians or, you know, Scythians or whatever. There's a lot of history. Christianity didn't just show up. The famous one we know is Judaism. You think for one minute that you're going to just use the simple seven letter word Judaism? And explain the roots of Christianity. Judaism itself is fractured into hundreds of different forms and types and hierarchies. There's not one Judaic priesthood. There's four or five. Who is, who's this cult of Melchizedek? Who are the semi, uh, Who are the Shilohites? Who are the Levites? Who are the Proto-Levites? Who are the Aaronists? Their own, right? And then you have the you know occult groups within them as well. The Kabbalists. And Kabbalist is really a synonym for female cults. They're just, that's what it really is. It's, it, you know, we're not getting it into it, but the occult traditions of Judaism are occult, but they're really female. They're female oriented. The matronit, maybe we've talked about that before, and the Shekinah. 
So Judaism is already a laughable term because it's many Judaisms. The Jews were uh, either uh, you know, imprisoned by a half a dozen races from which they were able to absorb all of these occult teachings. Because even in the Judaism, they sort of lamented the fact that there'd been, uh, let's call it guests in different countries like Babylon, Assyria, Egypt, and Persia, and lived for extended periods of time between 50 and many more hundreds of years, depending on where they were. And of course, they had absorbed all of these elements that later thinkers could call occult because they, they're slightly taboo. But you can't do without them because they make up your culture too. You've absorbed it. So when the Christianity went through this filtration process that so much was from the Orphics, so much was from the cult of Serapis, so much was from the cult of Mithras. Nearly all the soldiers in the Roman army at the time of the formation of Christianity were members of this cult of Mithras. But there was another cult called the cult of Saul Invictus, to which the, the king himself, Constantine, was himself a member. So occultism, the seven grades of the cult of Mithras, you know, you would get the salute, the military salute to this day was a cult of Mithras phenomena and no other because they came from a military group called the Scythians who were great warriors. And so most of the grades of initiation in the Mithraic rite, and each one was shown as a coil of a serpent, a, a serpent that had curved around a post or something else, even a man's body in seven coils. Each represented a, a, a grade of initiation in which handshakes were used. That's where the Masons got the handshakes from the cult of Mithras, the military salute and the military cap. And that, that, that's, that's, that's just three anecdotes. A great deal other things that are found in modern masonry and in even daily secular life come from this cult of Mithras. But the Sol Invictus, meaning sun in victory, is an ancient cult to which many Roman and Greek uh, patriarchs and also Caesars and pharaohs and military commanders belong. And then the one that I focus on the most is the uh, cult of Setian Atonists. Uh, the darkest cult, you know, that ever was, so to speak. Uh, uh, and uh, that cult also operated behind Christianity. So, yeah, the word occult is just a pathetic attempt to try and separate some of these influences as later thinkers down through the centuries, 300 AD, 400 AD, up to modern times, tried to expurge and push away some of these occult elements. They're still in Christianity. They always will be. I say in the introduction of my Astro Theology book that if you took away the pagan elements from Christianity, and it doesn't matter if it's Catholic or Protestant, you wouldn't have Christianity. It would be just fizzle. So what happened was the when Protestant came along, the same thing happened here. Martin Luther, John Calvin, Wesley, and all the rest of the Protestants tried to expurge more of the pagan elements from Catholicism. They didn't like Catholicism. You just hear that they didn't like it because it was idol worship in the churches. Yes, that's true, but unpack it more. They didn't like all these pagan elements. They didn't like Mother Mary because they knew damn well that that came from the Venus cult and from uh, you know the goddess cult. So Protestantism was another sweeping, not the first time, just a much more radical cleansing of pagan elements from Catholicism. Catholicism is full of pagan elements, but at the time when Catholicism was created, it thought it had purged even more. But the Protestants didn't like the leftover. And so at the time of Luther, they said, we got to go through it again. And Protestantism get created. But if you work it out, it's all to try a desperate attempt to purge the pagan element or the occult elements. And the biggest proof of this is God himself. God is goat. Sorry, folks, there's nothing you can do about it. Got is goat and got is good in the Scandinavian and Gothic languages. And the good goat was God, the horned one. That's why Moses has the horns for Michelangelo, because in those days it hadn't been demonized. And so wearing the horns was a sign of great wisdom and being of the good people. When you say, go moron, good morning, go, go caval, good night. Go is God, is go with God or go with the goat. Well, wait a minute. The average Christian doesn't see that. He sees the goat as being demonic, never asks why. You know, where did that come from? And doesn't do the etymology or the symbolism. That's occult. I don't want to look into it. Well, your word God that you use every day is occult. You better look, you better look into it. Or amen at the end of a prayer. You, like I said, if you, if you try to take out all the pagan occult elements from Christianity, there's nothing left. 
Protestantism tried its best. It sandblasted. Right? It took flame flowers to it. And still the pagan elements remain. The, the, uh, the Calvinists, pastors, wear the long black robes like the, Jewic, the Jewish rabbis. Don't have a clue where it came from. Old goddess culture. It's still there. You cannot purge it. The square mortar board, you know, in our secular societies with our teachers and the tassel is Jewish, right? The tassel on the mortar board of the old teachers. The tassel is one of the most extraordinary uh, important symbols that come out of Judaism. And, and, and it's, it's the design of churches, could you go in, you know, just that alone, navel, gable, cable, bell, spiral, steeple. You can't alter, you can't get rid of it. So uh, uh, this attempt by Christians or whoever, an Orthodox religion, to demonize the pagans is about the most laughable thing in religion. Study tree symbolism, I read two volumes on that just to show you, well, you know, to, to unpack what we're talking about. And the Irish origins of civilization, again, to show appropriation from pagan groups that later thinkers try to say, oh, no, 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 that did, we didn't do that. We didn't, we didn't take those motifs. But anybody whose eyes are open, you just walk, walk into the aisle, you walk into the a church and just look at it. It looks like a forest. It's designed to look like trees for a reason. Yet millions and millions of people who attend those churches, Gothic churches, whatever, have never ever made that connection, even though it's right in front of them. Or the mushroom cult. The cult of Dionysus, you see, is another one that uh, was plagiarized and cannibalized. Enormous. In fact, Jesus himself is Dionysus. He was known as Bacchus by the, the Greeks, the god of intoxication, the god of wine, merriment. You know, when you knew evangelist types, the Baptists dance and sing and ju junk, jump around, or the sign, one of those guys, the Christian science, dance with snakes and go ape shit, even go out of their bodies, or those guys who did all the, you know, talking in tongues stuff. That's not new. Every one of the motifs, including drinking the holy wine, the body of God, or the, the blood of God, drink, that's from a cult. The old cult, in one breath, you'd say, oh, a cult of Dionysus? Sure, we don't have nothing to do with that. Oh, yeah? I In my, in my book, I, I show, I have 750 images, color, showing things like the robes of many bishops and many popes. Just look at the design from the head to the toe. It's all cult of Dionysus symbolism with the god Mithras thrown in, you know, the Sunday, the worship even of Christians on Sunday. It's not new, you didn't invent it. Sol Invictus, right? There was loads of cults back then. But of course, as time went by, editing took place. It turned out that later Christians didn't want to have any connecting tissue to any of these cults. Even though scholars know what the hell you taught me, you, you're, you're connected to Judaism, and Judaism is connected to those cults. But there's other ones as well. And of course, that got slowly edited until you got the, you know, this extraordinary sanitized version that you have today.